Hi, my name is Gal Lawrence and thanks for tuning into my podcast today. If you're enjoying these conversations and you want to check out more of this transformational work, be sure to come back to guylawrence.com.au and join me as we go further down the rabbit hole. Enjoy the show. Jonathan, welcome to the podcast. Aloha. It's really great to be here. Thank you. I love asking everyone on the show this very simple question. If you were at an intimate dinner party with a bunch of strangers right now, and you sat next to someone and they asked you what you did for a living, what would you say? <laughs> uh, I would say uh, uh, I'm a healer. That's what I would say. Uh, and then they would probably move to the other end of the table. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's what I do. That's what I do for a living. I'm a, I'm a professional healer. Yeah. Professional healer. And if they didn't move to the under, other end of the table, I yeah. wanted to know more. What would generally be the typical response? That I work with people to uh, come back to their nature, their true nature, uh, through, a, uh, through a shamanic paradigm. Um, and I do that. There's a lot of different ways in which I do that. I do that through energy healing. I do that through through speaking to them. I uh, I, uh, I do that um, through laying my hands on them. Um, um, all kinds of different ways in which I in, in which I, I do that. But but more than anything else, it's about uh, the the return to something more natural in everyone. And uh, that that that's what everyone needs healing uh, about and on. And that's what I do. Yeah, amazing. I was going to say what what, and, and I know we're going to dive into exactly what sure. you do and everything. And and it's I, I'm always fascinated by these. But if, from a shamanic perspective, what does healing how what does that word mean to to you? Well, in you know what is shamanism about? Shamanism is the reverence of nature, the the worshiping of nature. And the reason why we would worship or revere anything is because we are inspired by it and because we want to emulate it. And if you look at nature, nature is a, a vast cooperative effort. Everything fits together. Everything is interconnected and interdependent on everything else. And the energy of nature is always moving, always moving towards growth and creation. And we as beings of nature... Uh, if we allow ourselves to enter into this paradigm, we are also interconnected and interdependent with everything. And we also have that, that, uh, that force inside us that wants us to grow and create further. And everything around us helps us do that if we, again, enter into that paradigm. Mm -hmm. And, so, uh, and so, so that's really what it's about more than anything else is that, that we're really no different than, than, uh, than the forest. And, uh, and because the forest shows us who we are through the, through the fact that it, it all works together and it's always moving towards growth and creation. And if you think about what would always be moving towards growth and creation, what would be that underlying intentionality? Love. Anything that wants to ex experience more of itself for the sake of experiencing more of itself. The, the only possible conclusion we can come to of what's underneath nature is love. Yeah. Beautiful. Absolutely. And you, when you look at um, all the indigenous cultures all around the world and the wisdom they bring, and we have, as a Western society, become so disconnected from that and so removed. I know my life looks very different these days. I know I was talking off air with you earlier, but I, I didn't have that rhythmic movement in my life on a daily and weekly basis that kind of moved with flow and moved with nature, moved with creation, as opposed to, I was just so far removed from it. Do, do you find that's one of the biggest problems you think that's going on right now? That is the biggest problem what's going on. It, it's it, because we are, um, uh, you know, the, the, the time of separation is now over. Hmm. It, it, it just is. And uh, because we can't, we cannot keep, keep continuing with the idea that it's, we're not all part of one great happening. It's one organism. And we are all, all each individual apertures that see, in which that, that one organism sees itself. Or you could think of it as we are uh, uh, individual waves in the ocean that can't separate ourselves from the ocean. Right. And, and so we are, we are not, um, um, we are not separate and, and, um, the the reality reality has literally become sick, 
because we have projected onto reality and, and the Huna philosophy that, I, uh, that, I wrote, that my book is about uh, is, is about this, uh, this philosophy that comes out of Polynesia. The, but, and the idea behind it is that we create reality with our thoughts. Well, you've heard that a million times. What that really means is that reality itself creates itself based on what we project on it. So if you think of reality as like a blank canvas onto which we project our internal world, and because so many people's internal world and the projection onto that reality is one of separation, fear, uh, uh, the hatred, greed, uh, profits over people, dominion over nature, that reality has shifted and become ill. And, and, and we're in the middle of, of, of a worldwide illness. And, uh, and, and that's really why. And so, and so now, because so many people are, are using, not only using this time to wake up, but, but uh, the indigenous, many indigenous cultures talked about, have prophecies around this time on the planet, that it would be this very dark time, this very difficult time, this time when, when humanity had sort of lost its way. But at the same time, all the prophecies, the rainbow prophecy of the Hopi, the eagle condor prophecy of the Quechua people, the Mayan prophecy, uh, mm -hmm. um, all talk about this time that, 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 while it would be difficult, all of these beings would be incarnating at this time. And there would be a sense that they, in their, in their in spiritual DNA, that they would be called to in some way usher in this new reality. And anyone, anyone involved in consciousness work, certainly anyone listening to this podcast, we're, we're all part of that. There are so many of us. And, and it's so important that we do our work to make ourselves well enough so that we can contribute our individual projection onto that reality so that that reality shifts in the direction that it's supposed to shift into. And that's, that's the massive waking up. That's, that's the reason even why, you know, the esoteric wisdom, my book on, on the Huna philosophy from Polynesia, uh, um, meditation, mindfulness, yoga, all of that stuff, that's, that's only been available in, in the way that it is to be, to be consumed about 40 years. And the spiritual intelligences know what they're doing. And, and the reason why we found ourselves, we, 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 all this esoteric wisdom is available to us is for the people who are going to usher, uh, usher in this new way. Yeah. Do you, you know, we're hearing you talk then, do you think it's human nature that we have to, or even universal law, that we almost have to break down or have discomfort first to to really drive us forward to create growth required well as a professional healer i could tell you that that uh, resistance and healing go hand in hand they okay. are they are they are the the, the uh, two sides of the same coin there isn't one without the other and um uh and that and you know we're we're hardwired in some ways to resist change even positive mm -hmm. change you know we uh, the 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 psyche has a, a default network in the brain that that uh, is constantly worrying about the past and uh, or, uh, uh, bemoaning the past and worrying about the future in order to keep a continuity of self. And when you adjust and you want to change that sense of self, the, the, the system goes, uh, you know, so so resistance is just absolutely it's absolutely a part of it. And and um, and that's what we're seeing now. That's what we're seeing now. There, there are the people who are really digging their their feet in and saying, saying, I, I am I am not going over there. I am not listening. I am not empathizing. I want people around me that look like me and that that uh, that I understand. And I want my world small. And, you know, and they're really resistant to uh, the idea of, of, of a global village. And, and, um, um, and the, the good news is that, that earth wisdom, um, which is, you know, because the earth, is say, the earth is showing us that we cannot continue as is, the earth's going to win. And anyone who's flowing, anyone who's flowing with, you know, with, with earth wisdom, which is just that I want to keep going. And the earth is telling me that the only way in which we can all keep going is if we all in some way cooperate and work together as is emulated in nature. And so if we're on the earth side, you know, uh, um, you know, that's the side that's going to win. That's the side that's going to win. Totally. I love it. I love the way you share this, Jonathan. I, I got to ask you as well, look, how do we then wake up to that fact? Because I, I know I lived an unconscious, a large part of my life unconsciously. I just didn't know any different. Like that's Me all too. I knew. That was my, my knowing. And I was going to say, for, if that was for yourself too, 
-hmm. Let's go into your journey first, then. How did you then come from an unconscious person? Because I, I, if I'm not mistaken, you were on Broadway and you were doing television. Yeah. yeah. You had that this background, yeah. and now you're a shaman. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a yeah, shamanic practitioner. I'll, shamanic I'll practitioner. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Beg your pardon. Yeah. Uh, but well, you know, I, I, um, you know, when you think about, I was an actor. I did my first play when I was four years old. And when you think about what acting is, what is it really? It's you learn the lines, you learn the blocking, and you hope that inspiration comes through. You know, and um, and I was never a fame driven actor. That was never the thing. It was always about telling stories that lifted people up, that uh, that uh, in some way opened things, opened consciousness up. And um, and I was always craving that that uh, that um, artistic uh, uh, high of of the inspiration coming through. And um, and what I found was that that I just couldn't I didn't have the reach that I, I needed to have. I, I just wasn't able to. Um, I also, you know, because show business is so difficult, I, I, um, I began to look into and develop a spiritual life, which I thought was just to sort of help me traverse the difficulties of show business. But the, but the spiritual life kept taking up more and more and more space. And I became more and more and more interested in it. And, um, and what I found, the, the, the shift, which actually happened um, where I actually decided I'm, I'm going to stop doing this and I'm going to be a, a, a full-time teacher and, and, uh, and healer actually happened on the volcano in Maui. I had a, a, a visitation. And this is after many years of, of working with shamans on three different continents and, and okay. uh, lots of shamanic study and all that. Um, but I just had a, I had a visitation that was, uh, that was hard to explain. Um, and uh, I, I knew it was in within a half hour. I just said, I have to completely, I have to completely change my life. I'm called in a different direction. And it was, it was an identity crisis. And all my friends thought I was nuts because I was doing well as, a, you know, as an actor. And, um, but I just, I just needed to make that change for me. And now I, I, there's a perfection in all of it. I can see that skill set is so, um, is so helpful. It, it, and even now in this work, you know, I mean, I, I wrote, I wrote my first book and it just kind of came out and it's just because I understand narrative, you know, I understand humor. I understand how to, how a group dynamics and all of those things led me to, um, uh, led me to becoming a spiritual teacher. Yeah, beautiful. So, with, yeah. with <clears throat> so, I'm fascinated as well because um, I noticed that you had worked with people from Brazil, Mexico, Bali, and uh, Hawaii. Which I believe your yeah. your latest book, The Shaman's Mind, is based upon the principles it, from Hawaii. It, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Well, what I found was what I found in working with the shamans in all these different places was that they, even though they're local, their their localities are different, their practices are slightly different, they all see the world in just about exactly the same way. Right. And and what um and and that that opened me to something. And then uh, when I discovered the um, the Huna wisdom, there was um, it was the the first time that I was introduced to a, a philosophical construct that helped me uh, see how all of these shamans are thinking similarly, which is the reason why I called it the shaman's mind, because and even though it's even though that this philosophy is out of Polynesia, it is a philosophy and it's very simple stuff and it's a lot of stuff that you know, I've just never seen it so elegantly put in one place. And if you if you follow that philosophy it, it and, and integrate it and use it in your life, you enter into the, the, the way in which the shamans see the world, all shamans, um, it's that universal. It happens to come out of Hawaii and my aesthetic is Hawaii. I love, I love Hawaii, Hawaii is my place. But, but, um, but what I found was a universal shamanic paradigm through this philosophy. And, and it's very, you know, shamans are tricky because they don't, uh, most of them, they, they don't even know why they do what they do. They don't know how they do it. You know, they don't, you know, they just do it. You know, right. and so it's very hard for them to to um, communicate to to a Westerner, you know, um, exactly what it is that they're doing, you know, because it, in some way it's it's so in their um, it's so in their culture. It's so, uh, you know, it's, it's an entirely different way of seeing the world. It's, it's seeing the world with the point of view point of view of, well, if I have an answer to a question, I just go to the tree and it'll tell me. You know, now we have to do all kinds of undoing to even get to that, you know, but uh, essentially that uh, that was the um, 
that's what I what I discovered about all shamans and uh, or so, just so many shamans, at least the ones that I came um, uh, in contact with. And this this helps you see through that lens. Got it. Got it. Yeah. yeah beautiful. Do you, why why do we? And I'm again speaking from my experience, but then seeing yeah. other people as well. Why do we fear this work a lot? Because so quite often we almost need to be pushed to an edge of a cliff, like like society is right now. But even to dive into the self and, and start to do this work and well, as simplistic as this an, as simplistic as this answer is, it's actually the answer. Um, we're terrified to feel our feelings, and uh, and what I mean by that is that you know we are all being uh, 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 um, made, and it's culturally indoctrinated that we are to assimilate, we are to fit in with everyone else. We are to keep up with the Joneses. We are told on television what we're supposed to look like, what our money is, what people are, what men are. Sorry, my dog. Uh, what, what people are, what men are, what, what, uh, what, what women are. You know, we're, we're taught to assimilate and, and to actually feel what's true and real for you is to pull yourself away from that expectation to assimilate and follow your own inner directives, connect with your own nature. And people are, people are terrified to do that because it's a singular path. It's a singular path that comes out of you. And we're taught not to be that empowered. You know, uh, um, you know the, the last 2000 years has been, have been um, um, uh, mono, think of it like monotheism. The, the idea of an off planet God that judges us, that has authority over us. And whether or not you adhere to that paradigm or not, on some level, the authority is outside of us. That's what we learn. that's in the collective unconscious. And so this work is about that the authority is not outside of you. It, it can only be accessed through you. And that's big responsibility. You know, I talk, uh, I talk about in, in the book over and over again about taking 100% responsibility because you are creating your life through you. If you choose to, you are creating your life through you. And our feelings may say, I'm in the wrong relationship. I'm in the wrong job. I'm not, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I actually don't like this person. I don't want to do this. I don't want to show up. I have to put up a boundary. I have to not speak to this family member. Yeah. But we're so afraid to actually be there and be in our own truth, you know? And, and so the, that's the biggest thing. If I, if I had to say, if I had to summarize what I do in my practice, I get you in your body and I get you feeling your feelings. And as easy as that sounds, uh, that's an entirely different paradigm than what we're used to. I truly hear you. I really do. And it's a, it's a beautiful saying I, I heard recently as well. You've got to feel it to heal it. And it's it is only in it is only in the acknowledgement of a problem that we gain access to the freedom to change it. That it, it's a it's it just it's this a strange truth, but it is a truth. And um, and that's why it, when we when we are not attending to ourselves, we are letting these things and they're in their wounds and they just keep they just keep perpetuating themselves and getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And and it's so important that we start parenting ourselves that we start addressing. I'm actually scared. I'm actually uh, uh, I'm actually uh, angry. I'm actually uh, jealous. All those things are, you know, if, if you think about if you think about nature, nature is a template. There are plenty of things in nature we don't like. We don't like tarantulas. We don't like cockroaches. We don't like great white sharks, but we would never think they're not supposed to exist. But that's what we do to us. These things in us that are considered dark, that we say, oh, I don't want that to be there. Well, it's there. And it's there. And even something as unattractive as jealousy. Jealousy is directive. It says, I want what that guy has. If you align with your jealousy, we're now in love. Hmm. Yeah. And, and so that's what, that's, what so, that's what this work is about. And that, that's what... Um, that's what shamanism is about, is accessing your nature within, even if it's an inconvenience to your neighbor. Yeah, because that's where, you, that's where you find your path. We're wired to find our path through our bodies. Yeah, it's almost like coming back and finding our true self and our own personal power and coming from that place. And, and, and one, of, one of the biggest things I used to struggle with in my life was actually saying no. Mm-hmm. You know, and not not having those boundaries, and and, yeah. and then of course that would create a series of emotions and feelings, and 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 really have 
my external world reflecting straight back at me, but I couldn't see it. You know, That's when right. you it's... when you wrote this book, The Shaman's Mind, I'm curious, did it come out during COVID, before COVID? It came out uh, July, uh, but it was written. It w what's crazy about it is I uh, the whole introduction is about the Watiko virus, and the Watiko Watiko is a word that uh, that comes from the the Cree people. Uh, uh, from North America, and Watiko is like a, it's like a psycho spiritual demon, like that that uh, that is born of our disconnection from nature, and it causes us to cannibalize ourselves, and causes wow. us to uh, to uh, you know pe uh, all those things, people over profits and hatred and and all of those things, and um, and it was so, and the whole first introduction was about that, and uh, and a year and a half later when the book came out, you know. Uh, um, I talk about this difficult time on the planet and little, little did I know that it was going to be that difficult. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it, it felt very channeled and it felt like I was, I, was, um, uh, I was connecting to something that was that was in the process of happening, but I didn't even have a context for it. Yeah, got you, got you. So I was gonna say, I have no doubt that your book is more than relevant than ever right now for anyone yeah. that's, in a in a point where they might be struggling and constantly looking externally into and you know the book the book is about individual healing more than anything else but under the paradigm that we are that the the second huna principle says there are no limits which means there's no there's no that separation is merely an illusion so what that means is that what we heal in ourselves we heal in the collective and so even though the book is about personal healing it is about personal healing as an act of sacred activism so my Hawaiian teacher, Serge King, he says, if you want to heal someone, think of them and you feel good. Because according to this paradigm, according to this paradigm, what, what we heal in ourselves, we, we heal in the other. Beautiful. And that then, of course, allows us to feel like we are actually making a difference because sometimes it can seem so overwhelming. You look externally, you look what's going on in the world and we just right. want to like hide away. But if we actually, like you say, take the action to start healing ourselves, we're in, inadvertently. That's right. it's, 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 just, back. it's just if everyone did their part, yeah. you just have to do your part, hmm. you know, and, and even, even if you think, you know, this is a very low bar, but if you think, uh, why not, aspire to cleaning up your own mess to such an extent that it doesn't spill over to into another's experience can we just do that <laughs> <laughs> boy can you imagine the world then my right. god so you mentioned that with principle number two now i do, yep. I do believe there are seven huna principles mm -hmm. is that correct mm -hmm. can we yep, dive into them a little bit yeah yeah. Uh, so the, the first principle and, and, and uh, uh, stop me if you have any questions. So the first principle okay. uh, and these and these principles are based on Hawaiian words that are and these principles are unique translations that that uh, that come from uh, Serge Kahili King, who's, who's my uh, my Huna teacher in Hawaii. So the first principle uh, says the world is what you think it is. The world is what you think it is. So that means not only that your experience of the world will be based on how you think about it but that the world itself, that reality itself, creates itself based on how you think about it. So that means that we are in a co-creative relationship with what we think in the creation of our world. Right. So, uh, so, you know, and, and, and this puts, uh, you know, when you talk about the shamans as magical beings, you know, they are simply aware of, of the fact that they are creating reality with their thoughts. You know, if you, if you, and we're, we're swimming in all different kinds of realities. If you, you know, if you go to a, a you know, if you go to a Trump rally, that's a reality. That's yeah. a real reality, you know, and everyone is, is co-creating that dream. They are creating that reality and that reality is real. Which means that, and, and if they have the power to do that, then we have the power to create whatever sumptuous reality our imagination can conceive. The reason why I'm, I'm so aligned with Hawaii is because to go there is to engage your imagination because you just can't fathom what you're seeing and what you're experiencing, you know? And, and so, and, and that speaks to, to something aspirational and inspirational about what is the quality of what's going on between your ears. Because whatever is going on there is creating your world. And if you just look at the things in your life that aren't working 
and know that you have a degree of complicity, unconscious or not, that you have a degree of complicity with what's going on in your life that isn't working. Aha, you have the power to change it because you created it with your thoughts and beliefs. Not some of the time, all of the time. It doesn't mean that we blame the victim because a lot of times we don't know what we're thinking and believing because they're so, it's so lodged in there as a habitual way of being that we, that we aren't necessarily even aware of it. But if you take responsibility for the causative involvement that you have in the creation of your life based on how you think about it and what you think about yourself, what you think about the world, what you think about the nature of love, what, what your beliefs are, what, what, what your limitations are, that creates the world. And that's what that first principle is saying. Yeah. Wow. That alone is massive. Let alone, let's forget the other principles for a sec. It, it, it's just, it's crazy. I mean, yeah. it's really, it's really deep. Yeah, yeah. It's, and, it's and, huge. And we're just taught not to, not to be that powerful. We're just taught not, that we don't have, we don't have that kind of power. And, and we really do. We really do. Um, uh, and, and so a mere thought even is, is the beginning of an alchemical, magical process of manifestation. And the more focus you give it, the more that process uh, uh, happens. Yeah, I, you know, Jonathan, I remember about 10 years ago uh, when I was going through a lot of shifts, I actually um, created a document and I, I rated my energy and it had everything, everything in my personal life, my relationships, my external lives, everything. And I started seeing what was like, influence in the way I think, feel and behave on a daily basis. And I was scoring myself and I was like, how can I start to change these over a long term period and start to think about where I live, who I hang out with, what I'm doing and, and every input to create my reality that was of more love, joy and peace and fulfillment on a daily basis. And it, it took time because I was changing my, my external circumstances weren't. Mm -hmm. But over time, I now live that person that from that by by exactly coming from that principle you know that's right if you just think um that that and, and there's, you know there's a spiritual aspect to this too because the spiritual intelligences they just want to love us but that's why they're around that's why they hover around they just want to love us they'd love to bring us our heart's desire but if you've cordoned off your reality based on limiting beliefs that's what they have to work with so, you know, I'll, I often give the example of, you know, if you're a woman who's, uh, you know, and you learned a very long time ago that women over 35 will end up alone and you're a woman over 35 and you're alone and you believe that because mom taught you that and you missed the deadline, you know, as much as spirit would love to sit the guy next to you on the subway, your beliefs make it so spirit goes, I just have to wait till she changes the belief. Mm. Otherwise I could, stick her, I could stick it right there. It doesn't make any difference. That's why the way in which we the way in which we limit ourselves with what we're thinking and believing uh, indicate to spirit what we are willing to receive. Totally, but you know the thing is, if I hadn't had met that resistance, if I hadn't met that limiting belief, I wouldn't have got the lesson. Of course, of course, you know? yeah, of course. That's right. And it's all just, the whole process is just about unencumbering our, that's the healing process. I wouldn't say that that's the soul's journey. That's our purpose on, that's our purpose on earth is, is to, is to unencumber, to, uh, to uh, remove that which obscures our perfection. That's what we're doing. Yeah. You know, and, and the more that we, we, we remove all those blemishes against what is just a perfect canvas of divinity. You came out that way. And then you start constricting because of the world and, you, and your family and society and money and all those things. And, and the, the healing is just to remove that. And then you're just a being of nature that always flows towards growth and creation, is wired to flow towards growth and creation, connected to everything to help you do that. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So we touched on principle two. Yeah. So pr pr principle two, we, uh, we talked about, yeah, uh, the, the, uh, uh, there are no limits. It, it, there's only one thing happening where we're all interconnected. That's that principle. Yeah, and, totally. and again, what you heal in, what you heal in yourself, you heal in the all. You know? Yeah, exactly. It was huge. Uh, principle three. Yeah. Energy flows where attention goes. Hmm. So this means that where we place our focus and attention with consistency, 
elicit an energetic response from a symbiotic universe that wants to work with us, that wants to send us creative energy based on where we're placing our focus and attention. So that means you have to pay attention to what you're paying attention to, because what you're paying attention to is eliciting creative energies from the universe that are bringing those things into being. So what we focus on with consistency, elicit the energy that bring to us the nearest physical equivalent of whatever we're focusing on with consistency. Yeah, beautiful. You know, And it goes so back it, to the example, doesn't it, of the lady over 35 fo continually right. focusing on why am that's I right. single? That's right. And, and the minute that you start focusing on he's coming, he's coming, that guy is coming, romance is coming, you are, at, you are doing alchemical work. You are doing energy work. Because you are, you are focusing on something that you want to happen. You know, it, you know, it was my dream to move to Hawaii. And I spent uh, um, a, a year and a half writing a book on Hawaii. Anything I watched on television was about Hawaii. I've seen every episode of Hawaii <laughs> Life in all 19 seasons three times. And, and I was doing energy work. You know, I don't know how I'm going to get to Hawaii. You know, that's expensive. But, you know, but by giving it that by giving it that continued focus over and over and over again, when the opportunity of Hawaii came uh, you know, to move there, uh, because I'd given it so much focus. Yeah, the doubt was there. But but the, the overriding energy what was so overrode the doubt because of where I'd been placing my focus and attention. Yeah, it's like um, it's like having a really positive obsession, isn't it? Yeah. It, it, that's exactly yeah. what it is. It, it, it's kind of, if you just think like, like what would it be like to be a, a cheerleader for me for the rest of my life? And knowing uh, that when I do that, that, that the spiritual intelligences of the universe support that endeavor. Yeah. Love it. You know, love it. Love it. Um, Next principle. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Manawa is the, is the Hawaiian word. It means now is the moment of power. So we know a lot about the power of now and mindfulness and all of that. But what this principle is getting at from a shamanic point of view, because in, in, uh, a mystic would want to abide in the now, a shaman wants to do something with it. That's, that's sort of okay. the fundamental difference. And, and the, the idea of be, behind now is the moment of power is now is the only place where we can access power because now is the only place where we can do anything. So, so th that means that we, we can, in the present moment, recalibrate the future, reframe the past, recalibrate our identity. We, we can make the now be whatever we want it to be. And we, have, we, we can only access power right now. You know, in the Hawaiian language, they don't have um, past, past tenses and future tenses in their language. So a, a sentence like, I, I went to the store yesterday to buy milk, in Hawaiian is my having gone to the store yesterday to buy milk is now over. Everything relates to the present moment. So their, wow. their, their language itself doesn't allow you uh, access to anything but the present moment or a, a sentence like I'm going, I'm going snorkeling next week becomes my having gone snorkeling next week hasn't happened yet. Everything relates back to the now. And that yeah. means, and, the, and, and if you think about it, you can start over in any given moment. That's what this principle is getting at. You can start over in any given moment. You, you're, you're, even, if, even if you've been mired in a bad habit, you in the moment you start the habit of a new habit. You can only do that right now. Of course. Yeah. We get so conditioned, don't we, on this linear time frame. Monday to Friday, alarm clocks, work, time, set, and everything is projecting, 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 and, and we, we just go unconsciously through so much. And, you know, and even, you know, when you do want something and the doubt comes up, which it will, you know, we all have wounds, course, yeah. you know, the doubt, the, the, the fear, whatever, you, you can only attend to it now. And you have to, and so that means, you know, when I talk about living a spiritual life, what am I saying? Being creatively engaged with what's happening. That's what that means creatively engaged with, with what's happening. And if what's happening is this doubtful thought form, I'm going to attend to it because, because I know that the, uh, that the world is what I think it is. And so I'm going to attend to it because, because I don't want that, that, that thought form is going to muddy up the energy. You know, mixed thinking gets mixed results according to this philosophy. Of course. Yeah. You know, so we have to, so, so we address it. You can only do that right now. Yeah. Beautiful.
Yeah. Fifth principle is aloha, which you know, which you know from Hawaii. And all it really, all it, you know, we think of uh, in Huna, uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say in shamanism, the only ethic is, is love. That's the one, what we're looking, what we're looking for is that love's perspective is a part of every move we make. That's what this principle is getting at. Is love present? And that could, that doesn't mean that we're just airy fairy, nice people all the time, because, because sometimes the most loving thing to do is to put up a boundary, is to, is to leave, is to, um, uh, is to be brutally confrontational. But what we're looking at in that principle is love's perspective present because love's perspective aligns us with the organizing principle of the planet. And so if we want to flow with the earth, which is a really good idea, um, if, 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 if love's perspective is present in your actions, your deeds, who you invite into your life, you're, you're in that flow. Yeah. So that's what that principle is getting at. Uh, the sixth principle, mana, uh, means uh, the translation is uh, all power comes from within. All power comes from within. So that means we are each a part of an infinitely powerful universe and that powerful infinitude converges at the point that I call me. So I have all the power and you have all the power. And this is, this is a really big one because this is, this is, this is the one that reminds us that, that uh, you, your journey through life can only come through you. And that, and, even, and that nothing has authority over you unless the authority in you gives your authority away to it. And so, and so it's saying that, that we always have the authority. And if you look at the word authority, there's that word author, to author our lives. That's what we can do when we, when we claim our own authority. And so, so I have all the power and you have all the power. My Hawaiian teacher, he says, I don't ever get disappointed in anyone because people are always going to do what they're going to do. And what he's getting at is that is that uh, that nothing that that you you uh, I have the power to let think, let you be exactly as you are. And if you're empowered, you have the power to let me be exactly as I am. And if you think about the nature of power, power over something is just going to lead to retaliation and fear. That's the re that's the result. Power against something just going to lead to resistance. But the power Real power is only when we empower, because when we empower, we have the power to give away. Yeah. You know, so, so if you're thinking in, 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 so that's so much, you know, and we, 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 um, we pull away from that, which, which we don't have. We, you know, we, we, we uh, get jealous. We, you know, we, uh, um, we separate ourselves from, from those things, you know, rather than blessing them. Because when we bless what we want, even if we don't have it, we're in the, en the energy of, of receiving it, you know, of being in that energy. Absolutely. It comes back. There's a couple of things I want to just speak to about that. Because when it comes yeah. back to it about taking 100% responsibility yeah. in the now, isn't it, to, to yeah. create that empowerment. But what would you speak to about maybe if you've had a traumatic past of some kind and then, of course you're now in the present that something might have happened even beyond when you could say yes or no as a child or you know there's so many ways but then we keep giving our power back to those moments and not back empowering mm -hmm. ourselves yeah well um uh you know my the the huna philosophy uh, is not just about the seven principles uh there there's um a practice in 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 the book that comes out of hawaii called ho'oponopono and ho'oponopono is about addressing that wounding that we received mm -hmm. and uh you know because because children children um they're they take everything personally and if they're mistreated neglected indifferenced misunderstood they will make that about something about themselves it's just what kids do and that gets they're called formative years for a reason right and that gets lodged in there as the sense of self and unaddressed it's that's what's in the computer that's what that is just, you know, and so so if you were taught this is just an example, if you were taught, I'm going to be punished if I speak up. Every time you want to speak up, you'll you'll, you'll be nervous, you'll, you'll you'll be embarrassed, you'll be shameful. 
And it's only in the addressing of that, because that, and that's just a mistake. It's a mistaken identity. That child was supposed to be able to speak up, you know? Um, and and it, so it's just a case of mistaken identity. And that's what, that's what you do is that you, in, in the Ho'oponopono um, process, and it's kind of a, a way of being, you're extending love to that child. Mm -hmm. And you're a, now, because the wound was born of unlove. So you give the love now to the child and the child starts to let it go, you know? So, yeah. so yes, all of these principles, all of these principles, they're based on, um, uh, they, they work best when we have worked on our wounding that don't allow us the power to sit in these principles, you know? And, and, and the whole point is, is, um, is the principles ask you to look at the, those things inside you that don't allow you to create the world that you, you want. It's not because you're an idiot. It's not because anyone's an idiot. It's because we were taught things that are antithetical to our best interest that lie lodged in the unconscious mind. And as soon as we make them conscious, you know, but by, by actually saying, uh, uh, I'm actually going to address the fact that, that I, uh, I'm ashamed to speak up. Doesn't mean that it's going to happen like that, but that is a wound and I'm going to address it. And, and then we're in business. Yeah, you know, beautiful. So. Yeah, no, thank you. Because uh, it, it uh, from what I'm seeing or I'm picturing is almost like on one hand, we're actually working on the healing, the trauma, whatever is on this back. Yeah. And then on the other hand, we're starting to apply the principles into our life slowly but surely and work to, to move forward. Would that be? That, and, you know, that's why I say the, 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 it, the negative narrative, it's, it's going to be there. Hmm. You, anytime you inspire or aspire to anything, there's going to be a voice inside that says, who do you think you are? Or that's not for you or, or, or something, or, yeah. you're, or you don't look right, or you're not smart enough, or you don't have enough money, whatever. And like, you know, like, and, and with this, what, this, what uh, this philosophy is getting at, what Ho'oponopono really is about, is about, I see you there. You're just a little boy. And I know why you feel that way. And I love you, but we're going this way anyway. And if you come along with me, you're going to like it better. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. You know? Yeah. And then one more principle. Yeah. The yeah. last principle, uh, uh, effectiveness is the measure of truth. <laughs> so truth is uh, the, the only absolute truth is that everything is. Everything else is just something that someone made up. And so the only truth is the truth that actually works for you, which means that truth is highly individual. And now we're back in our bodies, in our power, in our, because it's, it, because it's only from you that you can, it's only what's working for you that you decide what is your reality and your truth, hmm. you know? Uh, and so, uh, uh, and, and this principle is also saying that, that uh, be flexible and be creative because there's a million ways to do everything, you know? There, there are a whole bit, you know, and if one thing doesn't work, go back and go back and go through the principles again. If what you're getting isn't coming to fruition, you know, if, if whatever truth it is that you're aligning with isn't being effective, what are you thinking? Uh, uh, um, uh, are, you, are you sensing the fact that you're connected to everything? I'm going through the principles right now. What are you focusing on? Because that's, and that's inviting in energy. Is love present? Are you in the present moment? Are you empowered? And then see where you are again. Love you it. Know. Yeah, it's so, it's so empowering, especially when you have something and you have a blueprint you can turn to and practice, you know? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, and now I'm taking all this is in the book, right? For people yeah, want to dive deeper. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and individual practices. It's not just a book that you read about that, that's just philosophical. There are, there are practices and exercises with each principle so you can really integrate it into your life and, and, um, and understand it. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you, Jonathan. I look, I got questions. I ask everyone on the show yeah. and I, and I'm feeling I need to ask you this one is what's mm -hmm. been a low point in your life that's later become a blessing. <laughs> uh, uh, I was cast in my first Broadway show. And I, and it, and I entered it and was involved with the show for about a year, and it was the dream come true, and the most difficult, angriest, saddest time of my entire life. And and I won't go into why, but it just what, but it, it but it was just 
what struck me was that this thing that I thought I wanted was not for me. Hmm. And, uh, and it was, it was very hard. It was very hard to, and sobering to, to really look at that. Um, uh, but, uh, it, it opened something up and it, it, it now, now I would, I would say it speaks to the nature of spiritual paradox. You know, spirit speaks in paradox. What seems big is small. What seem, Im, seems important isn't. What seems strong is weak. And every iteration of opposites that you can imagine. That's how spirit uh, attend, tends to work and communicate. And so there was just a sense of, um, I, I did all the right things. I went to all the right parties. I'm here and I don't feel that thing that I thought I was supposed to feel. And, um, and thank God. <laughs> thank god <laughs> yeah 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 no thank you for sharing um what does your morning routine look like my morning routine um uh probably too much scrolling to be honest uh you know I'm, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh you know i mean um i mean i really am um i'm seeing clients almost every day you know i, oh, I really okay. am yeah, yeah i have a very very full practice i even uh, you know i um I'm working with a wait list even, you know, so, um, wow. so, you know, more than anything else, I'm, I'm, I'm really, you know, when I, when I show up, I'm really a hundred percent. I really, you know, I'm really a hundred percent. So more than anything else, it's about being a normal person and it's about taking care of whatever taking care of myself looks like, you know, whether, whether or not that's, that's, uh, some sort of relaxation, whether or not it's, it's just turning off my mind, you know, I, I, or, um, you know, I'm, I'm, because I'm, the nature of my work is spiritual. I'm, I'm just, I'm in the energies all the time. And, and I'm in the energies all the time, probably because I need so much healing, to be honest. You know, I, I think it's a win-win, you know, but because that's so much a part of, um, uh, just so much a part of my life, more than anything else, it's just about um, uh, just relaxing and take, whatever relaxing and taking care of myself looks like. One of the things that's really, that's really come up in the last, you know, as, as my practice has gotten so big and, and the book and all that, that um, I just can't, I can't sustain the reach that I want in the city. That's why I, I need to make that move. I, I, you know, I need to really, um, I need to be fed by nature. And, um, and so the, the move is as much about me continuing to do this healthily. Uh, as it is anything else. I hear you. I hear you. I work with two other practitioners. One, one therapist. She's been doing it for twenty years. Another guy's uh, Matt, who I work with as well. He's been working with sound and individual clients for seventeen years, and it takes its toll. It really does take its toll. You know. Yeah. 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 And you, you just, you just have to. Um, um, you, you just, have, I, I just have to really watch it. I just have to really watch mm -hmm. it. And you know, I really. Um, uh, you know, I, I even, I, I, I take care of myself enough to where, where I'll even, if I get a sense that the client is going to be something that, that is going to, you know, uh, uh, feed both of us, you know, like uh, I'll, I'll say this isn't probably the, the right fit or, you know, I do what I need to do to take care of myself because um, it really is, you know, when you're doing this work full time, it's, uh, um, it can be a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. No, yeah. Fair enough. Um, okay. What's one thing about yourself most people wouldn't know? Um, it's one thing about myself that most people wouldn't know. My God, I tell everyone everything. Um, <laughs> I, I really do. I, I really do. But because, you know, I just use myself as an example because I'm, you know, I, you know, I, I'll, I'll often tell my clients, you know, I'm a step ahead, but I'm just a step ahead. You know, like, uh, uh, you know, just to really normalize things because I, 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 yeah. I'm not... Uh, um, so uh, what is something that, um, that, what is something that, that someone doesn't know? Um, gosh, what comes to mind? Um, uh, I guess, I guess that, that um, although my clients would know this, but I guess that like, like I, there, isn't, there isn't a big backstage with me, you know, it's, it's like, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, um, you know, it, it, nothing feels worse than telling someone to do something that you don't do yeah. nothing, you know? Uh, and so, um, you know, so I, I think that more than anything else is that I'm, I'm, I'm really, uh, here's what it is. I am in a constant process to 
stay in integrity, you know? Um, and, and that means, and so, uh, and anyone who looks at, looks at me and goes, oh, he's a spiritual guy who writes books and all that, like, like that, you know, it's like, that is, that is, that is not something you don't coast. That is something you maintain, mm. however you maintain it. Yeah. So yeah. that more than that more than anything else, I I struggle. I'm, I'm uh, I get nervous. I get fearful. I you know I, I all of those things and and um and they require it, all those things require attention. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, last question. Everything we've covered today. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to leave the listeners to ponder on? Um, if there is, um, even a spark of something inside you that says, there's this crazy thing that I'd like to, I'd like to do or, or experience or, or become, and I don't know how many, how I would pay for it. And I don't know what anyone, I, I don't know what, how people would, would think. And I don't know what my family would think. Uh, um, but the, the, and it's hidden, uh, it's that's the seed of your life. That's the, that's the seed of, of, of your soul. And so pay attention, pay attention to those things. And, and they, they may look crazy to loved ones. They may look crazy to you, but if there's something that in that, that are all those things, but inexplicably excites you anyway, that's your soul. That's the higher self trying to speak to you. Perfect. Perfect. If anyone wants to find out more, Jonathan, about your work, your book, where can we send them? So the book, The Shaman's Mind, Who Know Wisdom to Change Your Life. That's available on Amazon, wherever, where, and, and uh, you know, wherever books are sold. Uh, you can reach me very easy at mine, at, uh, sorry, I have a new, new domain, uh, just jonathanhammond.com, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N-H-A-M-M-O-N-D.com. And, uh, and I, I certainly see... Um, uh, I've had a lot of people, I've done a lot of these podcasts since the book came out and a lot of people have, have reached out and, and uh, I have new clients. So, so uh, feel free if, if, that, if, you, if you feel called to uh, work with me in a, in, a, uh, in a more individual way, we can look at that, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And then for anyone listening to this, if they press pause, the links will be below anyway, uh, below this, whatever you're listening to, whatever channel, it goes out in so many channels, I can't keep up myself these days. But uh, Jonathan, look, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Um, your enthusiasm is infectious. This is bursting through the screen, right? And uh, I, I have no doubt everyone listening today would have felt the same thing. And uh, yeah, greatly appreciate your time for coming on. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Mahalo. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you.